This tutorial uses the same Blender scene as the previous tutorial, but it uses more complex code to make a different version of the game. In this version of the game, the interval between new balls becomes less and less, making the game harder as time goes on. It also shows how to add sound effects. The starting point for this tutorial is the file made in the previous tutorial. You can download the file from my website or you can make a similar file yourself. Add speaker and set the X location to 2. I want two sound effects in the game, so add speaker again and set the X location to minus 2. I'm going to call this speaker, speaker glass and this speaker, speaker bell. In the object data properties, change the speaker behavior to background sound, click open, go to the folder where you have your sound files, click on the sound effect that you want and open. Do the same for the other speaker, speaker behavior to background sound and select the breaking glass sound effect. That's all the changes I need to make to the Blender scene. In Project Manager, I've already made a new Blend for Web project, My Ball Hit Challenge. I need to overwrite the dummy Blender file and the dummy JSON file. I have jumped ahead and overwritten the files, and in the JavaScript file, I have copied over the code from the finished file. See the previous tutorial if you don't know how to overwrite the files and copy over the code. The finished files can be downloaded from my website. And now for the exciting moment when we click the link for the HTML web page and see if it all works. And the sound didn't work because in the Blender file File, external data, automatically pack external files into the Blender file, I forgot to click. When you make changes to the Blender file, the most important thing to remember is to re-export the JSON file. The Blender file will automatically be updated. Now the sound effects will work. Next, I'm going to go through explaining the new code. There are lots of game parameters. I should have made constants, but I've left them as values in the code. In the global variables, the score is initialized to zero and game over to false. Scrolling down to the load callback function, the only change from the previous tutorial is a call to a new function, create collision sensor bat. The mouse moved callback function is very similar to the previous tutorial, so moving on to the make duplicates function. In the previous tutorial, the set interval method was used to call the myTimer function every two seconds. But what if we don't want the interval to stay the same? What if we want the interval to get shorter and shorter? Well, I'll show you a way of doing it. The interval is set initially to two seconds. But each time a sphere is created, the interval is reduced by 20 milliseconds. Until the interval gets less than 500 milliseconds, half a second, 
or the game is over. This is the line that makes the function be called repeatedly. Here is the start of the function definition and inside the function definition is a call to itself. A function calling itself is called recursion and the recursion results in the payload in the function being executed repeatedly. It is executed repeatedly until the game is over and the recursive call is not made. Outside of the function definition, this is the first call to the function that starts the recursion process. Each time a recursive call is made, the sphere is duplicated and the duplicate is appended to the scene. Before I look at the next section of code, I want to go back and look at this line from the previous tutorial. The setTimeout method sets a delay and this is enough time for the sphere to hit the bat or to go past it. When the delay time is reached, this function is executed. This gets the Z location of the sphere. If it is less than zero, the sphere has gone past the bat and game lost is set to true. This is the equivalent line in the new version. This time I've made a separate myGameOver function and it not only sets game over to true but it plays a sound effect and displays an end of game message. Moving on to look at the create collision sensor bat function. When a sphere hits the bat I want to play a sound effect and add one to the score. There is one collision sensor that will detect anything colliding with the bat. The sensor manifold links the sensor to a callback function. So when the sensor becomes positive, when anything collides with the bat, the callback function is called and the sound effect is played and the score is incremented. And finally, in this version, the timer displays minutes and seconds. I'm going to end the tutorial there. I'll put all the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. To visit my website, click the eye icon in the top right hand corner. If you'd like to subscribe, click the stick man. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the patron link. Thanks for watching and goodbye.